All right, so in this video, what I wanna do is go over my five favorite plugins for Cinema 4D. Now, because of the type of work I do, mostly architectural visualization with a bit of uh, medical animation, some other motion design stuff, um, these are what I use most often. And so depending on the type of work you do, you might find other plugins more beneficial to the types of work you do. But I wanted to go over these, talk about some of the advantages, disadvantages of each of these, and show why I use them and, and why I uh, really recommend them. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, well, it's hard to talk about Cinema 4D plugins without mentioning Redshift. Uh, it was a third-party renderer, now kind of integrated into it. You can even bundle it. Um, I like it for its stability. Um, and even more so recently, I like its integration into Cinema 4D. Now, it is a bit expensive. Um, I do think the Maxon 1 license kind of makes sense. Um, if you can swing it because of the extra things it comes with. And if you do think you're gonna get some benefit from it, um, what I don't like here is that uh, the monthly fees go up so much, but you know, they've been doing a lot of good things recently with Redshift, like I said, integrating it into Cinema 4D, like being able to render directly into your IPR. Um, the materials have been working better, making progress, things look better in your perspective view. Um, so lots of good things happening there. You may be, surprised to hear that I'm also a big fan of Octane. And while I don't use Octane as much as I used to, um, I still actually have a subscription to it. And I do think that is unfortunately one of the downsides of a lot of these plugins is that they're pretty much all subscription based. Um, I personally get Octane during the Black Friday sale. They seem to do every year, which I know happened not too long ago, but it comes with several other things, including Grayscale Gorilla Plus. So that's... Um, how I, I get that, it's significantly cheaper, bundled in here. Ember Gen FX, which is a great way to do smoke or fire. Maybe not quite as important now that we have Pyro, but still quite powerful. Free models from Kitbash, a whole bunch of other things. And like I said, it's a lot cheaper than trying to do Octane by itself or even Grayscale Gorilla Plus by itself. So I like that it's integrated in here. Speaking of Octane, I do miss some of the things it does. Um, the live viewer here just seems to be so much faster, so much more interactive than Redshift. Um, I like that they try to introduce new features, you know, whether it's the upscaling, whether it's the um, uh, R, the render network they have. Um, I like that you can navigate in your live viewer. Um, all sorts of really cool things like that. Brigade, if you haven't looked into that, though, who knows if it will ever come out. Um, so I really like Octane. I like the look of it. My main reason from switching off of it to say Redshift was stability. Um, so, you know, if you're having problems with that in Octane, definitely check out Redshift. If you're not, by all means, stick with it um, if you're liking it. Uh, also hard to talk about plugins without mentioning Grayscale Gorilla. They do a lot of good things. Um, I personally am a fan of their Plus subscription and it does come with quite a few things to make it worthwhile. Um, Coming back in here, uh, you know, they have a lot of plugins, not just the HDRI link, which is what I primarily use. They have um, the Studio Rig Plus, um, other things as well. I'm not even sure I have everything installed um, plugin wise, but they also have a significant library of pre made materials, HDRIs, surface imperfections, you know, you name it, you guys can can read the different kind of options here. Um, one thing I do wish is, obviously it wasn't a subscription, it goes for pretty much all these things, um, but also that the materials, oops, don't know why I, I did that, but I wish they would upgrade their materials to the newest node editor, the newest material type, as um, one, we have to work in the shader graph, which I don't mind, um, I do like that all of our nodes are right here, but those shader graph materials don't preview as well in our perspective view. Um, and I like the organization more of the, the new Redshift standard material. So um, I do wish they could, could do that um, a bit more with their materials, but hopefully that's something they're working on. Um, next up is Forrester. Really, really like Forrester. Um, it's my go-to plugin for doing trees, doing grass, even flowers if I need to. I also think they have a plugin for rocks. Um, it used to not be subscription-based. They just switched not too long ago. Um, a bit unfortunate, but I still think there's some value there. Um, and it's why I still use it. You know, I like that you can come in here and there's a built-in tree library that you can kind of come through Decide, choose a whole bunch of different properties here from the level of detail to the material selections. And you can add wind, simulate it, 
whole bunch of different things. So it really is a powerful um, plugin for doing trees, grass, flowers, like I said. Um, one of the things I liked that they added not too long ago um, was their expansion pack. And I wish this was better integrated. It seems like it's a whole separate thing. Um, but uh, not only do you have more trees here, as I click through and make a whole bunch of trees and risk crashing uh, Cinema 4D, but you can also choose the render engine. You can also choose the season, all right? Um, material count. So, you know, if I'm using Redshift or Octane or one of the other renderers listed here, it's great that I can at least get a start with the materials. Now, I will say um, the materials I do feel like could use a little bit of work. I do tweak them myself. Um, so, you know, don't think you're going to get something that looks amazing right away. They look pretty good, but it also depends how close you're going to be to these trees. Um, and, you know, they also allow you to control that with the amount of detail here, um, you know, with the, the render levels, if you want more detail or less detail. And you can even specify a different amount of detail in your um, viewport, which is nice because you have a lot of these trees can really start to slow things down. These trees do work in a MoGraph cloner. They work in the Octane Scatter. And... They even have their own multi-cloner, which, um, you know, it it's good. Um, I'm not sure I use this more than the cloner, but um, it definitely has some other options that uh, can make it worthwhile to look into. And then also, like I mentioned previously, let's see where to go, um, you know, rocks, flowers, that type of thing. And, and I th even think they have a different expansion that has like plants and, and flowers and whatnot. Another... Um, plugin I wanted to talk about was the Sketch Fab Importer. Um, I'll go over kind of the website and how you can download it shortly. Um, you can also do the exporter as well if you know that's something you're interested in. But once you connect it, you do have to create a free account. Um, you can type in whatever you want, like a house for instance, and see what is available. Now, full disclosure, oftentimes these models do have some issues with them. Uh, whether it's how they were modeled, the number of polygons, the quality of the textures, that type of thing. Um, you can kind of get an idea of how things are going to look based on the vertex and face count. Some of these things are animated too, so that can be, um, you know, worthwhile. But yeah, um, definitely find it useful, but it, they are free models, so don't expect them to be as nice as something you may pay for off of Turbo Squid or, or one of the other model sites. But uh, really hard to beat some of these um, models, especially when they're free. I mean, I come here and type in car, um, I'm not going to find every model, definitely getting a lot of stylized stuff, but yeah, you might find just what you need, or at least a good place to start when it comes to that. Now I'm um, talking about it, you know, the Sketchfab importer, um, when you go to download it, what's interesting is it doesn't actually say it works with 2023, um, but I have tried it with um, 1.5, and that is the version that seems to be working for me in 2023. So um, great. I'm very happy to uh, see that. Uh, it's also hard to talk about plugins and not bring up Insidium, not bring up X Particles. It too is subscription based. Um, X Particles, if you're not familiar with it, is a very powerful particle system in. Uh, for Cinema 4D. It makes the one that the default particle system look like um, a child's toy. Uh, it's very much like MoGraph. In fact, I think it's more powerful than MoGraph and call it kind of MoGraph 2.0 or advanced MoGraph. Um, Cinema 4D started to maybe bridge the gap a little bit with, you know, introducing Field several versions ago, now Pyro, um, but there's still a lot of really good uses for X particles. Um, whether it's some of their more stylized FX type things, you can do fluids. Though I have had problems trying to get something as simple as, say, a cup filling up with liquid, making that look good. It has dynamics. It has cloth. Um, it can do a lot of things. It's very, very powerful. And like I said, it's not to say it isn't without its issues or drawbacks. Um, but in terms of a, uh, a plugin that has so many different uses, it's really hard to do um, better or than X particles. Um, I also don't think it's terribly expensive, um, but I guess that's all relative, right? Um, and all these these plugins do cost money. It would be great if they were free or if they weren't, um, you know, yearly. Some of them you can get on a, a, a monthly basis or a semi-monthly basis, which is nice. Um, the last time I needed X particles, I just did the three-month subscription, and that worked out. 
Um, but yeah, it it can be expensive and it's something to keep in mind when looking at plugins is what's going to give you the most value? What are you going to use the most? Um, but these are the plugins that I find the most valuable that save me the most amount of time. And that's the reason why I don't mind paying for them. All right. Well, that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know in the comment section. If you could also subscribe to the channel, if you found it useful, I would appreciate it. And until next time, take care.